We just never rehearsed the ending. But anyway, you never rap, you welcome back to Anderson's up. TV. Which is your favourite iconic riff out of those two in that mashup? They are two iconic riffs, aren't they? They are. And they're probably both done on. Well, mm, I know, Graham, one of the I know Graham Coxon is a big Marshall fan. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, mate, I don't know about JTM 45. I'm not sure about Jack White. It's a good shout. But before we go ahead, we have some housekeeping. Oh, we've got to get the broom so and dust around. Get okay. the dust out and your little dress. So we would love you to like and subscribe to this channel. Um, and every <laughs> time we hit another 50,000 new subscribers, every single one of you from the first to the last one is entered into a prize draw mm -hmm. and you might win something. When we, we hit a million team, subscribers, uh, we, do, we do a clone. What, give away yeah. something every 10 every, Or over 15 or Ooh. something, you know, 15. Make it a bit more okay. interesting, Maybe you know. Maybe we will, but just subscribe, please. Um, most of the stuff that you see us demonstrate in these videos is available to ship internationally. Uh, some restrictions will apply based on contracts and things like that, but so check it out on the website. If you can buy it, we'll ship it. Um, we sell t-shirts, you know, maybe you want to look uh, beautiful like Pete does in one of his uh, glorious Anderson's things. And I think you're better, yours is um, so freshly, isn't it? And we have timestamps in these videos as well, so if you're thinking, God, this is boring, I wonder what happens later on, <laughs> check below and you can find out. And there's skip one you can skip to, to the next video, well, yeah. if you want. Uh, right, no okay. Video shop in the corner. Mr. Pete. Yes, Mr. Lee, go on then. This is awesome, isn't it? I've got to say, I actually think the studio series came in as a bit of a slow burn. I sort of think, like, when it very, very first came out, yeah. I seem to recollect us going, crikey, it still needs to be really loud, and I'm not sure if it's that, you know, does it sound as good as the original ones? And then, for some weird reason, over the last year or so, we've used them more. Yeah. And again, if you want some ideas, check out... Uh, the video we did with Jamie Slays doing um, old Metallica. He did an amazing Metallica medley, literally just using the Studio JCM 800 yeah. and a Tube Screamer. And it's, it just they, kills it. The sounds they get out of these little mm. amps and they're only 20 watts mm. is just the right Marshall sound, if you yeah. ask me. Well, yeah. look, so I guess if you it went through Marshall's you know, history and you sort of <gasps> shortened the whole kind of 70 years down into like iconic moments. Yeah. You'd get the JTM would be the first iconic moment. Yeah. That was the amp that, I mean, Marshall will say it changed rock and roll. It probably did in fairness. Was that the Finna Basement basically, uh, the circuit that, yeah. because they couldn't get it in the UK and so they did yeah. that. Is that you that's so Yeah, noisy? it's me that's pretty hideous because I've got my drive pedal still yeah. on. So yeah, it, that's exactly it. So, you know, you go back to the 60s, Jim Marshall has his shop in yeah. Hamwell guitar players kind of going, you know, look, oh, what are these new Fender basement amps that sound amazing, da da da, da. You just couldn't get them for yeah. love nor money in the UK. Uh, so Jim and his little team designed an amp. Yeah. Uh, it, I think the schematic largely followed the basic idea of a basement. Yeah. But the due to... The tubes were different, right? Yeah, but that was get bizarrely, here, so. yeah, that was, that was just like, oh, that, that part's not available or that part's not, yeah. so what, what would be a good substitute for it? Yeah. And all that beautiful happy accident happens, and of course the JTM ends up being one of the best amp sounds ever. Yeah. My, if I'm honest with you, although you think of lots of those early JTM users, and you think of that crazy cranked kind of sound, yeah. I think the clean sound on a JTM is one of the best I, I agree. Get. I agree. So we'll demonstrate that. And I suppose that's the bulk of what this video is because yeah. today the release of the new Studio JTM. But yeah, the other iconic moments would have been the super lead, you know, yeah. all those black and white pictures of yeah, Jimi yeah, yeah. Hendrix Just in front of his 100 watt Marshalls. Yeah. That's 
that one, like the studio version of that. JCM 800, so, you know, end of the 70s, beginning of the 80s, where it was like, you no, know, lots more preamp gain and that, that sort of yeah. hair metal kind of but they era. But four runners in all of this sound and the tones that you hear yeah. on all of it. It's Silver, just Silver Jubilee, iconic. which was yeah. slightly hotter again. And, yeah. and But yeah, so look, the Studio Series is all available in two versions. You can have a head, 20 watt head, well, switchable between 5 watts in its low mode, 20 watts. I just noticed mode. I was running the whole intro there on low mode. Yeah, um, and then a combo, a 112 what? combo. There are matching speakers, so you can have uh, uh, this fantastic looking slanted 212, kind of looks like a mini 412, or you can just have a 112, which is basically like exactly the same size of this combo. So yeah. it, you can either sit the head on it or run that as an extension cabinet. Yeah. They are like the original amplifiers have four inputs. So you have a, a normal preamp and a high sort of treble preamp. You can do what Pete and I have both done, which is use the little patch cable to connect the two channels and then yep. both preamps run simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Or you can just choose to plug into uh, one or the other and just, you know, get that's the sound that you get. Three band EQ and a presence control. Um, stuff that is new and modern, I suppose the high-low Volume is, is uh -huh. new and modern. The effects loop is yeah. new and modern. The DI output is new and modern. Yeah. Um, that's but, basically but it. It's can I just, sorry to interject here because I we got a JTM forty five here in the in, mm -hmm. in in the studio with a four by twelve, and when we run that, it's always like this has to several have to come down to press and I'm running this almost at twelve o'clock all of it, and I was like, hang on, when I put this in the first time, mm -hmm. I'm like I'm so surprised that it just sounds so great at twelve o'clock. Yeah. Anyway. I really like this. I'm the a big fan already. logo on here, the, the script logo that I guess we're all kind of familiar with, so I'm sort of pointing, you know, the one that just looks like Marshall handwritten, didn't, that, that only appeared about sort of maybe five or six years into the Marshall um, yeah. company being formed. And prior to that, they had two or three variants of these kind of just sort of rectangular um, panels with yeah. Marshall written on it. Like our deco kind of stuff. Well, yeah. my... Probably my favourite one is there's a white one where the maroon writing is mm. is bigger. This is a this was a much more ornate sort of engraved yeah. metal uh, plate with the Marshall logo embossed on it as what well. Is that, is that birds there on the side or? I'm not sure, but it's quite it ornate, like... isn't it? It looks like sort of Roman columns. Um, you've got this beautiful weave on the front for the grill cloth, um, and you know this lovely. The even the vinyl is less. Um, textured. textured than what you would get on a JCM yeah. 800. You know, so it's very, very much like almost that faux leather kind of look. It's not going back uh, this, I'm telling you right now. This is staying here. Well, it's got to live with its brethren here brethren. in our little mini Marshall this, Tower. This is, you know, we were talking about which is the favorite one. I like JCM. This is, I'm, I'm well, warming up to this one. Pete, I think we'll, we'll try a little bit with the telly, bit with the Les Paul, whatever. We'll do most of the tones on the 212 with the head. Mm. We will stay tuned though, we'll show you the high-low mode, we'll show you the what we've done with the effects loop, and we'll also run it with a little Bugera PS1 power soak. So if you're really going, oh, I love the look of that, but it's got to be crazy quiet, we'll we'll introduce that as well. So mm -hmm. do you want to just... Can do, do. Should we just start by showing the individual channels without jumping them? We can do, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they came like this. Did it? Yeah. They, they put that oh, in Oh, I see, because I, I had to, I, I did that, I didn't realise. Oh, right. Okay, so you're plugged in the so in input one. one. Which is the high treble, I guess, yeah. is it? So yeah, so let's have a little uh, listen to this. So everything is 12 o'clock, even the, the high treble is at 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know what they said to me, they said, Pete, you're gonna like this amp. And I was like, yeah, you sure? He's like, you're gonna love this amp. Mm -hmm. And immediately. It sounds you, so good. It's absolutely, although the, the Friedman Little Sister, which Pete uses a lot in videos, is a great yeah. sounding amplifier. Although the Friedman has, is like a hot rodded version yeah, yeah. of this, in, it, in its soul, in its heart, it's kind of, that's basically yeah. what it, this and it, here's a funny from. here's a funny anecdote. When I used to tour, and the first one of the, the first world tour I did, a little Devo, I used I had my set my amp set up with me, you know, uh, with a Lone Star, Mr. Boogie Lone Star. But we, I ended up using a floor pot, you know, the pot. Yes, I remember. And the the profile or the uh, thing I used was the JTM. I always used the JTM, and I had the Vetter head 
I always used to do ATM 45 in it. Wow. Because there's such a, it's such. <laughs> if you take the reverb off. <laughs> it's so immediate. Yeah. And so like on it. And even with a 20 watt like this, you can imagine if you have this in, in the full fat version, yeah. it's so punchy and immediate. And that's why I love this. Mm -hmm. I'm I love the basement because it's 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 takes your hand your head off, but you also have to know how to because a lot of people go, Oh, I can't play that. No reverb and like, oh yeah. you know. I think oh, that's, I love it. It sounds so that good. That was man. where the so good. first time I ever played a hundred watt super lead. Yeah, just it's the ultimate of just like, you know, oh my god, I play if I play like a half a percent wrong note, it just leaps out and punches you right yeah. in the nuts. And the whole audience gets a massive yeah. head <laughs> like that because but, you But if you can play Yeah you can't you have then you know, but listen, but anyway, this is reverb, more controllable. Sorry. from Thorpe just on top of that but it's so good I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel this is like, 12 o'clock yeah always say like, I wanted to sound good at 12 o'clock and what's happened here because mm, that's they must have changed that somehow well I my brain says the high treble control on its own channel sorry the high treble channel yeah was broadly unusable Too on unusable, vintage yeah. Marshalls so I'm surprised you're getting such a big sound out of that I think everything is a troll uh, man there's no master <gasps> volume on these amplifiers so the you know gain occurs by turning it up. And that's where either the five watt mode or using it with the um, attenuator yeah. will, will maybe help. Or of course, use pedals for gain. You you know. Oh, you, you take, sometimes I use a pedal like a Cali 76, instead of, instead of making it louder, you put it in and then you can turn it down. Mm -hmm. So you get slightly less volume, which is also a good idea if you don't have a uh, master volume amp. Yeah. So I'm just running that lower. Mm -hmm. So that's with, and this is without. So I basically turned the volume yep. down with my pedal. I tell you what a lot of people used to do with Fender, Hot Rod Deluxes and DeVille's was put that little thing through the effects loop. The little yeah, yeah. The, you could yeah. So totally do that. With do right. I mean, that sounds so good, sorry, man. That's just, no, it's fine. I'm, I'm, Let's, oh. Can we hear the normal channel? Yeah, now? so the normal channel is over here. So that was everything at 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So let's just see, see here, excuse me. This is a carrot juice with uh, <laughs> carrot, lemon, turmeric, ginger, <laughs> and apple. It's like, I've said, time, it, I've said it before, I'm saying it again. We, we used to make our own ones of those in here, or Pete, yeah, we did. Pete did. They were great. We and it was the same, same thing in it. We should yeah. do that again. Extra ginger. Yeah, exactly. So everything at 12 o'clock here, you can hear It's not so as much. different it's, as I remember it. It's much fatter. Here's one. Love that, I love that yeah. one. Yeah. Wow! Can you see I'm excited about this? Yeah, this I mean. Oh. It's unusual to no pedals, no reverb, still sounds great. That's quite muffled there. It is muffled, I agree. It, you need the, either use the high treble on its own or jump yeah. the two channels. Yeah, let's just start, stay on here. I just want okay. to see what the mm -hmm. uh, tone control is. They've really, really worked on the bass end of this, I yeah. think. It, it, it used to feel, I'm sure when we've used the JTM, unless it was loud and full up yeah. bass end, it never had enough. Yeah. Um, right, is, okay, so wow. we, we talk about 
I think when you when you talk about amplifiers, you hear words like diming it and uh, jumping it, right? Yeah. So diming it refers to turning everything to ten, as in the ten like, cent coin is a, is a dime. So that's everything on ten is a dime, yeah. uh, which a lot of guitar players would have done with this to get the the gain sound. And jumping it is when you basically link the two channels. I suppose hypothetically you could have an AB box and literally channel switch between Didn't, the two uh, if you wanted to. But Gigwick just come up and put something out where you can have something with effects loop and two levels and stuff. Oh, probably. Yeah, There's all sorts like of interest. So uh, now what's happening is the signal's going into that channel one, coming out and back into channel two. So, so then we can mix these two channels together. Indeed. There you go. You get that. F it's already fatter. Is it, is it, is it, are we, are we running it? Are we getting too loud in here? Absolutely amazing. I mean, it's 100 dB on the, on the yeah. thing there, which is, which is. But I think, so we're just going to get uh, the audio yes, turned down a bit. Yes, saying, what's the funny red clock in the corner? That's our decibel meter. It's not terribly scientific because obviously true measuring sound pressure levels, you should have the microphone like a meter away yeah. from the speaker. It's not, it's built into the little clock thingy the little reader so but it gives us an idea we always say if we're anywhere around about 95 db that feels like we're at a gigging yeah. kind of volume there and if we're sort of round about 75 to 80 db that's super home use level well i'm not um you know this is now like nine o'clock the tide treble and i don't Ooh. i don't think i think because it doesn't because it's only 20 watts, I don't think it's gonna go loud, loud. No. But it's gonna, it's gonna crank the gain yeah. in. Wow! That's a high treble all the way up. Let's just keep holding ears if you don't. I don't think necessarily this amp is made for that. Flipping I it. think the amp is made for to be used with pedals and you, with. You, you say know. that though. It sounds great, my, though, man. I often <laughs> feel if you go back and listen to some of those old classic Marshall using bands of the yeah. 60s, so you know, like the Yardbirds and the Blues Breakers and all that kind of yeah. stuff, um, <laughs> I often feel the driven guitar sounds are oh, that broken yeah yeah you know like yeah it did when you just dimed it it did it's not necessarily a sound that i really like i think i prefer it just before then where yeah. it's slightly more natural was that what they saturation. had wasn't it? that was the sound they had that was the sound they had and they'd put fuzz pedals into them and tone benders and all kinds again, of stuff but on low mode so okay so this is interesting so what pete's done now it's probably a good opportunity to say the valve complement in these actually is the same <laughs> as what would have gone in an old JTM. So yeah. you've got two uh, ECC83 preamp tubes, you've got two uh, okay. power tubes, I should remember what ones they you are. You can hear it hiss at me. 5881 power tubes and then you've got an ECC83 phase splitter. Okay. Um, but yeah, in low mode it's going to run it down to 5 watts. Take the reverb off, so we're going in completely dry. I, I think <laughs> that that's where I think the decibel meter is really useful in here because in YouTube land, no one's got any concept of the difference in volume levels. No. But you could see on there, the difference between high and low mode was about five dB, okay, something well, that's like a, that, you know, four or five dB. So that's, yeah. quite, that's quite a lot. Yeah. Um, I like that, man. Yeah, wow. I still, okay, so let's just, um, let's get a sort of an edge of breakup. How does it work with okay. pedals? You should, you've got to try it with the Les Paul as yeah, well. Yeah, All those a... kind of. Yes. Shall I get a Les Paul first yes. before we do all that? Okay. Yes. Obviously what's going to happen now is really it's, it's going to punch the front end of the amplifier a bit harder with the humbuckers. So you're going to get more gain at the same relative volume level uh, with all the same settings. What have you got there? You, it's all a 12 This man. really is a 12 o'clock 
although kept your normal volume is low. Is that just... Yeah, but that's... Yeah, that was just... Uh, no, it's 12 o'clock now. No, the other one. Yeah, because that's too... Oh, yeah, okay. So... Uh, Sounds great, man. That sounds great, man. I'm how, very, I'm how, really... did, how did so many manufacturers at the beginning of like the, the electric guitar, you know, journey, how did so many manufacturers just get it so right? Yeah. Because I don't know. All we've done since 1965 or whatever is talk about how do we get this same sound. How do we get that Marshall. sound? Yeah. You know. And there it is, isn't it? Mm? Well, the, Taylor's got a good mm. point. It's the mm. chicken and egg kind of conversation, yeah, isn't it? First? Is that because that's what all the great songs yeah. were written but using? This is great, man. Mm. This is really, really good. Mm. And I love the way it looks. But my goodness me. That's just a bit could of we, a compressor. Yeah, could we use something on your board that's a bit reminiscent of... I'm thinking like the deco, just mm -hmm. something that's more reminiscent of a, of a sort of a pedal that they would have had in the... Yeah. It's a rock and roll Superb. sound. Oh, my nose is running, man. It's hay fever. Uh, it sounds amazing. Mm. I don't know what else to put on here. Well, Maybe a bit of delay. It's so dynamic. So you've got. Holy mother. So all of Pete's pedals are going into the front of the amplifier. Yeah. It's just this little blue sky up here that's going through the effects loop. Yeah. Um, flipping out. Right. Let's <laughs> put the... I just want to put the... Um, the Bugera... Now, the, I'm only using the Bugera because it's absolutely the most affordable attenuator we need, that we've I mean, do got. We, does it even need it? Well, I think... My whole thing is that it doesn't really... Well, really? that, look, you got up to 100 dB there. There's yeah. no way that people are having 100 dB at home unless they've got some sort of soundproof thing at the end of a long garden. But I think because it's so compact... Poor people. Yeah. Not, not, poor, not poor, poor as in not impoverished, poor, impoverished but, but just but poor like, as in yeah, what a bummer. Whoever, yeah, what a bummer, yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, let's just put it through there because, I okay. mean, yes, there's lots and lots of other products like the um, Ox and the Two Note stuff yeah. where, where you can use it as an attenuator and then feed into your um, interface true. and all that kind of stuff. But the, the PS1 is, is just a real yeah. simple, it well, just makes it quieter. Let's do that and come back in a minute. Yeah. Right, so we're back in the room. Uh, the Bugera PS1 is plugged in. Those are about £100. It's a completely passive device. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't need any mains power or anything. And it's yep. plugged... The speaker output from here goes into that, and then that goes into the cab. Yeah. So you do need an extra speaker lead. Uh, we've Bugera. set this up gunned pretty much, so we've now got a sound where, well, you can hopefully... Actually, you know what? I, if I'm going to be critical of this, uh, and I sort of almost feel like mean being critical, I don't think the... They, they could do with the little knob little white. marker being having a white marker on it. It's not immediately obvious where it is, where the things are set to. And no. I can imagine if it got dark, that would just so I might get a little blob of Tipex myself and just you know pop that in. Anyway, we've got this. It's a good idea. Pretty gun. So all the gain you're hearing is coming from the amp. Um, there's no pedals on, and as soon as you plug the attenuator in, it drops about. 5 dB yeah, anyway, yeah. so this would have been what you know. But have a if you play now and then I could I'll do with a little white Tipex thing on there as well. Well, let, we should sell Tipex, Pete. We'd make a fortune. I've got a little Tipex for you here. You almost have gone everything. Uh, I like the sound of it like that. Oh. Just you keep your eye on the attenuator and then that'll give you an idea of how much quieter it's getting in here.
comment anything below about. I'll say about tear. Well. Now oh, we can talk over it, can't we? Just about. Just yeah. about. You lose. I prefer it without. Well, so the minute you put any attenuator in between an amp and a cab, yeah. the more you turn it up, the more you lose the sort of excitement of it. It will begin to sound, will lose treble. It will lose that sense of, you know, you're not going to get all the natural feedback and all that kind of no. stuff. But you're getting that, you know, it's usable and you get the essence of the, of the sound. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, that... Bugera PS1, you can use with pretty much any valve amplifier. So yeah, if you've you, got a head you know, and you yeah. cap, or you need or, the combo yeah. between the speaker and the amp. So, I mean, I think let's just do, we'll, we'll, we'll remove the, the Bugera. What we'll do is yes, just please. a very, very simple uh, trade off here where Pete and I'll set the two amps up the same. I'll play an A chord, he can play an A chord, and then that way you'll kind of get the idea between the sound difference between the head and the 212 mm -hmm. and the 112. Personally, with almost all guitar amplifiers, if you can have this instead of this, yeah. it's better. Yeah. Uh, but of course, if you you know if space or, or money or whatever dictates is what you have to have, then that's you need to collect good too. heads and have a little amp or something like that, and then just have one or two cabs. Yeah, isn't that what you Justin Derrico said? His live rig yeah, has was, an amp yeah, like that, cabin yeah. and head switcher. Well, not anymore though. Not anymore. No. Although he said he might go back to it. Who knows? The lure of real amps. It's yeah. real. Once you once it, once it's not there, man, it's like oh, you know. Once you lose it, right? Anyway, let's do that then. Okay, Mr. P. Yeah, so you uh, have got the normal channel. Well, we've both got the normal channel on two, and the treble channel halfway up. Everything else is halfway up. So, what does your A chord or a G? What's the, what's the rock and roll chord you're going to play? G. I think it sounds pretty similar. I think you've got two. I think it's just the cat. Two it's just 12s. the 212 versus the 112. Yeah. What speakers are in here? That's a good question. Because I don't um, think it's the normal speaker they use, is it? Is that we. Am I. Am I is this a. Uh, G12M65 Creamback. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice. See? That's our favourite Celestian speaker. I thought, I thought so, that it doesn't have that. Um, Cre that greenback sort of yeah. V30 sort of nasally. It's the base end. It's, got it's, the, the, it's got the base end at the top in here, which I really like. They've done a great job. And here's another fun fact that Friedman uses those for their amps too. Right. So you got in that in that one here, so the little Friedman pink taco, and, and in the one behind here, he's got there's two, there's the same speakers in there, and it just gives it such a different character to the clean tone. I'm not I'm not it saying for the gainy stuff. It doesn't get much doesn't get much better than this, does it? But yeah, here are the four artists that they're basically saying have been sort of synonymous with the JTM amplifier over the years. Jimi Hendrix, Angus Young, Joe Bonamassa, Gary Moore. It's like, That's like it. yeah. mic drop. <laughs> clang, 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 clang. Um, i tell you what, man, this amp is, inc I love it. I think it's incredible yeah, uh, um, next step in Marshalls. I, you know, I really hope that we're going to see more like Well, this and the crazy thing is, again, look, if you want really detailed spec, dimensions, all that kind of stuff, head on over to our website and that's where it'll be. Um, I would happily play one of these. The thing that these. makes me feel most warm and, you know, goosey inside is that this is all still made in Milton Keynes yeah. in the UK. So this, you know, Marshall have managed to get this sort of, you know, it's not quite as affordable as the there's the sort of DSL range and Origin mm -hmm. and stuff, which obviously comes out the Far East. But it's, you know, relative to other either US made or British made amp brands, you know, and I'm talking of your, your, your Freedmans and all your posh kind of things like mm -hmm. that. I think the Marshall Studio series I think it's stacks great, up dude. well price wise. It's definitely one to be considered. And speaking of pricing, pricing. Mr. Pete, oh, uh, here I we mean, go. again, prices change over time yeah. and all that stuff. So At again, you know, always. Jump down below if you want a, the today's mm. price or the most up-to-date price. Okay, we reckon the head is going to be round about the 900 quid mark and the combo round about the 1,000 pound mark. I mean, that's... That's a good price. That's almost half what you might pay for a boutique similar Freedom. priced. Yeah. 
and the cabs we think are going to be something like 450 for the 112 and 600 for the 212. They are including VAT and free next day delivery in the UK. No um, that's that's good for this. I think it is. Outy wouty. I would like it. I can see in the ultimate kind of man cave, like all of them. Like of the mini. Yeah, yeah, all the mini. Know, heads. Like the, the four yeah, mini four heads, them, yeah. uh, you know, each one on a 212 or just one 2x12 and a, and a and Pete to switch between them all. This is my favorite um, of the lot. Oh, I'm 100% with you. I'm 100% yeah. with you. I and think then, my second yeah. favorite one is, is actually probably the one we haven't got, the Silver Jubilee. Um, but yeah, that. That is not epic. that there's anything wrong with any of them, but this it's all horses man. for courses. You know, I mean, if, if Zach Wilde is your thing, you ain't going to get those kind of sounds out of a JTM. You out know, of you a need, You need wing. to go JCM. But look, Pete's going to play us out. In fact, maybe we'll jam out. We should jam out, man. Um, and I'm going to take a strat here and play that. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm.